What's up guys and welcome to this tutorial on the IEB final exam from November 29, 2018. Okay, so before we did the SUP and now we're going to actually go through the um, actual paper. Okay, so we're going to start off with the multiple choice and let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first question says Newton's second law can be expressed mathematically as f net equals ma. This equation consists of, and we need to know the number of vectors and scalars. Okay, so if we look at the equation, f net is equal to ma. Okay, we know that a force is a vector. Okay, is equal to a mass is a scalar and acceleration is a vector. Okay, so what we have is two vectors and one scalar. So which option would that be? Two vectors and one scalar is B. Okay, so question one is B for stuff. Then it says question 1.2, the vector di diagram shows two forces in the same plane acting on an object O. Another five Newton force in the same plane as the other forces applied on the object O. Which of the following represents the direction at which the five Newton force must be applied to ensure the object is at equilibrium okay so essentially what we want to have is a closed vector loop okay so i'm going to start off by drawing our four newtons okay so we have our four newton force and then i'm going to draw these head to tail so this would be the head um okay so head to tail we have a three newton force right there and so to close this vector loop we need to have that right there which would be our five Newton force. Okay, and which one of those is that? That is B. Okay, but what happens if we chose um, to put the 3 Newton first? Okay, so if we chose to do the 3 Newton first, we have a force there, 3 Newtons. Okay, head to tail, we have a 4 Newtons. And then once again, our vector closing the loop is going to be that same one in the same direction. Okay, so either way, we get the right answer. And that's question 1.2. So 1.2 would be B. Okay. A ball is dropped vertically from rest above a hard horizontal surface. The motion of the bouncing ball is represented on the velocity versus time graph shown below. A resistance is negligible. Okay. So let's actually understand what's happening here. Okay. So um, this ball is being dropped. So if we were to do the displacement time graph, it would look something like this, right? It's starting here starting that point there quite at a height then then it goes all the way when it reaches a maximum velocity is when it's at the bottom so that's where it hits okay so um, point a would be or this point is where it hits the floor okay and now it's moving in the opposite direction that's why we have a shift from the positive to the negative and now we're moving upwards at b okay moving upwards all the way to C okay so at C the velocity is equal to zero so we have a turning point right and then at D it's going downwards again and it hits the ground and we have it repeating basically okay now the question says at which point labeled on the graph does a ball reach its maximum height after the first bounce okay so this point right here is the first bounce which is also the position a comma b okay so kind of the same place but it's basically b then we have c then we have d here okay so where is it at its maximum height it would be at c okay so the question uh, 1.3 the answer is c okay cool stuff Question 1.4, a speedboat tows a water skier shown in the diagram so the skier accelerates, so that the skier accelerates, okay. The magnitude of the force exerted by the skier by the rope is, on the skier by the rope is, okay. Okay, so if he's accelerating, if the skier is accelerating, then the force exerted on the skier by the rope, by the tow rope is, it must be greater, so this is true, than the resistive force. If it wasn't greater, if it wasn't greater, then he's either a constant velocity, okay, uh, or he's decelerating, okay. So therefore, 
um, I has to be true. So we're left with uh, these two options, A or B. So now we just have to decide which one it is. And then let's see, I, I uh, equal to the magnitude of the force exerted on the tow rope by the skier, which is also true. And this is from, these two are both true. And this is from Newton's third law. These are action reaction pairs. Okay, and so the answer to this question would therefore be I and I, I only, which is A. So 1.4 is question A. Okay, so again, the reason why it's I is because if the force was less than or equal to, then we either have a constant velocity or we're decelerating, and um, a double I is the action reaction pair of this statement right here. Okay. Okay, question 1.5. A block of weight W slides at a constant speed down the inclined plane at an angle theta. Okay, we've got our normal forces and the frictional force. Okay, so because uh, basically it says what is the magnitude of F? Okay, so we know because it's at a constant speed, the sum of the forces in that downwards direction is equal to zero. Okay, so what are the forces acting? We have a force acting downwards a component which would be equal to the positive w sine theta okay and we have the force friction which is a negative is equal to zero so f is equal to w sine theta so the answer is d so 1.5 d okay then it says <clears throat> a ball of mass m travels horizontally with a speed v before colliding with a vertical wall Okay, so let's start by drawing this out. Okay, so it's moving that way. Um, before colliding, the ball rebounds at a speed v in the direction opposite to its final direction. So this is before and after we have it going that way. Um, okay, so both times it's got a mass m. Okay, and it says calculate what is the magnitude of the change in momentum. Okay, so... Um, Let's take this way as being positive. So the velocity here is V and the velocity here is minus V. So change in P equals M V final, which would be V minus minus V, which is V initial. So we have this equals two M V. And that would be D as well. So question 1.6, the answer is Okay, then we have a stationary nucleus uh, decays and emits an alpha particle. Okay, so stationary initially, emits an alpha particle of mass m. The alpha particle is emitted with momentum uh, p and a kinetic energy e. The mass of the recoiling nucleus is 50 times greater than the mass of the alpha particle. What is the magnitude? Okay, so magnitude, so we don't care about direction, of the momentum on the kinetic energy of the recoil recoiling nucleus. Okay, so uh, using conservation of momentum, we know that uh, P initial is equal to P final. Okay, so the P initial, we've got um, essentially 51 M, which it would be, let's say, mass initial, velocity initial of the entire system is equal to mass of the nucleus final velocity of the nucleus final plus uh, mass of the alpha particle final velocity of the alpha particle final okay and this velocity is equal to zero so this entire side is equal to zero and we know that um, this term here is equal to p so this term here um, let's call this uh, p of the nucleus final plus p must equal zero so p of the nucleus final is equal to minus p okay so but it also asks for the magnitude so magnitude would make this a positive p so we're stuck with a and b okay so the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is e okay and it's got a much smaller mass than the um than the recoiling nucleus so the kinetic energy ek of the nucleus would be e divided by 50. Okay, so we're left with B. So question, the answer to question 1.7 is B. Okay, cool stuff. 
Question 1.8. A small charge Q is placed in the electric field of a larger charge big Q. Both charges experience a force F. Okay, what is the correct expression for the magnitude of the electric field of the charge Q at the position of charge small Q? Okay, so let's think about this. So it's asking what is the correct expression for the magnitude don't care about direction of the electric field of the charge Q at the position of the charge Q so at this position okay so let's look at our formula sheet and if we look at our formula sheet let's see what are we working with we're working with fields okay so we're working with this uh, middle formula here or the bottom middle formula which is E equals F over Q so the governing equation is E equals F over Q. So we want to know the electric field of the charge Q at the position of Q. So the forces experienced is the same. So our force, our E, is equal to F. Now we just need to know, is it Q or is it, so is it that or is it this? Okay, so um, we want to know at at the position of the charge small q. So we want to know this one right here, and so the answer is D. So question 1.8, the answer is D. Okay. An ideal ammeter or ammeter is used to measure the current in a conductor. Which of the following describes the resistance of an ideal ammeter and the way it is connected? Okay, so let's think of what we have. Let's have a simple circuit with a resistor R, and we have an ammeter here, and we have some battery or something like that. Okay, so what is the purpose of ammeter? Is to uh, get the current reading. Okay, so um, we also know that V equals I R, so I is equal to V over R, right? So if, especially, so this is in series, right? Um, so if the ammeter had a resistance, then we would have to have um, resistance external plus resistance of the ammeter, which would not give us the correct cur current. So actually what we want is we want that term to be equal to zero, so that we're reading the actual current going through and so the answer is right there we want it to have a resistance of zero when it's connected in series so question 1.9 a okay so in which of, okay so coil and a magnet can each uh, move horizontally to the left or to the right simultaneously at the same speed okay in which of the following will a conventional current be induced in the coil in the direction shown in the diagram when both the magnet and coil are moving. Okay, so we have this coil right here. So the current's moving in this direction. Okay, using our right hand solenoid rule. Okay, so we know that we want the current going essentially, if I draw my bad hand, our hand would look something like that. That's a finger and one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's Okay, and our hand is essentially underneath it and it's curling upwards, right? It's curling this way. This way. So we have, so that way we know um, that we need a north here and a south here. Okay, so we need those two poles. Okay, and using Lenz's law. Okay, so using Lenz's law, for us to have a south here, these two need to be moving towards each other okay so what because it lenses law induces the opposite it'll induce the opposite so if the magnet moves this way then we will have a south and a north so that they attract each other but if the magnet moves that way then we'll have a south and a south so that they repel each other okay so using lenses law we, we know that we need the magnet to move to the what's that direction right so we're left with these two and we know that we want the coil to move to the left 
So we're left with D. So our final answer is D. So question 1.10 1, 1 is D. Okay. Yeah, and that is the multiple choice section complete. Uh, I hope you guys find this useful. If there wasn't, if there's a question that isn't clear, then let me know and I will go over it again. Um, but in the next video, we will do the next question. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys found it useful.